Hey everybody, welcome to HD Piano. I'm Dan, and in this lesson I'll show you how to play My Heart Will Go On from Titanic. This is the melody version lesson, and we're going to learn the intro in this first of seven videos. Here's the intro. Two, three. And then eventually we'll be learning the verse, which sounds something like this. Etc. So this is a melody version lesson. Normally we feature accompaniments or accurate piano transcriptions, so the exact piano part from the recording. But there was enough demand for a separate lesson on... Uh, something that could stand alone. You might be able to hear the vocal line ringing in the top voice of the piano right there. So, My Heart Will Go On from Titanic. The movie was, le was released in 1997. I'd like to know what your favorite 90s flick was. For me, it was Hook, Robin Williams at his finest. What about you? Comment below. This is middle C right here, and we're in the key of E major, so we have four sharps. And we start right here on this E. Let's turn the right hand first. This is that pan flute or, or penny whistle or I don't know exactly which wind instrument it is, but it's kind of a flute instrument and uh, it's doing this. Two, three, four. Okay, so we already have this ornamental ba, 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 ba. That's it slowed down. So from the beginning. Two, three, two, three, and then we have A, G sharp, E, C sharp, A, A, B. Okay, so that's our first phrase, I would call it. Now let's look at it again, all together. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three. Okay. That's the first half of the intro. Next phrase. Two, three. Two, three. Okay, so it's similar. It starts the same way with E and F sharp, and then F sharp and G sharp. And then instead of, we have so we're walking down these four notes, A, G sharp, F sharp, E, and then F sharp, B, and then G sharp, B. We launch into octave C sharps. If you can't reach octaves, that's okay. One note would be fine. Two adds thickness. Drop those down to Bs, and then we have a little ornament trill on F sharp and G sharp, and we land on F sharp. So let's look at the first, uh, or the right hand in this first intro, real slowly. Two and three and two and three, two, three, three, four, two, three. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three, four. Okay. Fantastic if you're still with me. That was challenging. Go back, rewind, work out those notes, and then uh, memorize that right hand. The left hand, I'm afraid, does not get any easier. But we'll make it easy as possible, um, and that is by breaking this down into sh chord shapes. So I don't expect you to reach these three notes at once, but this is the chord we're implying here. If I were to reduce it to its simpler form, it would look like this. It's a C-sharp minor triad. C-sharp, E, G-sharp. Now we're just moving that E to the top. So it's the same chord quality, just expanded. And that's how you're going to play it. One and two and three and four. Get used to that rhythm, that one and two, hold and four. 
because we're going to do that again on the next few chords. Okay, this next one's a B sus4, or just B sus if you want to call it that. It's B, F sharp, B, and then this is the sus note. Sus means suspended. Does that sound suspenseful? What sounds more suspenseful, this or this? I would say the former. I would say this sounds more suspenseful. Uh, the fourth scale degree is hovering above the all-important third scale degree, or chord degree, hence sus. So there you are, on a B sus chord. All right, moving on. We have an A chord here, an A add two chord. It's A, E, B, and cross over to E up top. And then E, or back down through B and E. So. All right, and then we're back up to our B sus4. So let's look at those first four measures of the left hand. That's the first half of the intro. Two, three, four. Guess what? The second half of the intro, even though the right hand changes, the left hand stays exactly the same, save for the last note. So here's the second half. And there's the last note. We resolve that B sus4 to a B chord on the very final note of the intro. the verse okay and that is in the next video by the way that wasn't clear all right so now putting hands together this is always the most challenging part for most new beginner or new learners and beginning learners um, reason being is because we have to think about two different things at the same time and that's just really challenging so how do we get over that how do we how do we play two hands together I always always refer to my favorite practice technique and that is slow practice okay um, if you cannot play hands together at super duper slow mo, I'm talking like this. If you can't play it at that speed, you can't play it at this speed. Okay, so that's my recommendation, is play it as slow as you need to, okay? That might mean memorizing the parts. That almost certainly means memorizing the parts and then practicing it super duper slow first. And then work your way up gradually from that tempo to your desired speed, okay? So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna do some slow practice. Um, I might not go as slow as you need to, but I'm gonna do a pretty slow pass through the intro, okay? Here we go. Two and ready and. second half. Okay, so I played it perfectly there. If you need a template, if you need a blueprint to refer to, that was it right there. Go back and, and uh, match that. And if you need to go slower, use your speed controls there in the video player. Okay, let's do it at a slow medium speed. Two and ready and.
Okay, and then one more notch before recorded speed. So this is just slightly slower than recorded speed. Two, and ready, and. And this is approximately recorded speed right here. These are quarter notes. One, two, play. All right, so we do have a couple variations. Uh, this intro part comes up twice uh, in the remainder of the song, and the one variation is after the chorus, and this is the only change. We just play an extra note at the beginning, so it's like that. So if you watch the whole song video in, in the lesson series, you'll notice that difference at the midway point. And then the final time the intro comes up, uh, we play this these differences, so it starts the same that extra note. This is a different melody here. Simple though. So that's different. It's just one. It's pretty much the same as the intro. And right here we play octaves here on the G sharp and B instead of just single notes. Um, like we did it the first time. So just really subtle, nuanced differences uh, if you had questions about those when they come up in the whole song. Speaking of the whole song, you're going to find the rest of this series at hdpiano.com if you're not already there. If you're on YouTube, say hello. If you're on social media, go find us and say hello. Send your song ideas to requests.hdpiano.com. We think you'll really like this arrangement of My Heart Will Go On, and we hope you'll continue at hdpiano.com with us. I'm Dan. See you over at the home of the hybrid piano lesson.